Un, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. All right, we're live. Hi, guys, and welcome back to Your Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality and everything about the metaverse. Today, very, very special video. And by the way, big welcome to you. If it's your first time here to the channel, welcome to this awesomeness. And a huge welcome back, of course, to all our regular viewers and subscribers, because you are... Awesome, that's right, and it's thanks to you that I continuously upload new content to the channel. Now today, very exciting video as we will be putting the Pico Neo 3 link with the 4K DP cable here to the test using Aceto Corta, not Competizione, the Aceto Corta VR app, which is a racing driving game. And we will be using the G923 Logitech guys. And I'll show you how to do the installation very briefly, give you some tips there. And also we're gonna go inside of the cockpit and see how everything is. So without further ado, by the way guys, we will be using our G7, which is this computer here, the HP G7 Fury Zen Top, not the G8, the G7 is an older model. But at the end of the day, I'm going to show you my graphic settings and everything with it as well. All right, guys, are you ready? Let's hop into VR. All right, so first, let me show you my graphics in-game settings before we actually start and get inside of the cockpit of the car. All right, so let's go to main menu and then go to settings here. Let's go to displays first. So I chose 16, uh, 1600 by 900 here resolution for the screen because I needed to downsize a little bit for the recording. However, it doesn't affect inside of VR. What will affect your VR performance, however, is making sure you click on open VR early support if you have the Pico Neo 3 link because otherwise it will not work inside of your VR headset. And of course, if you have another headset like the Rift, um, then pick this one, otherwise open VR, because as I mentioned, it won't work otherwise. Full screen rendering, I found created some performance issues, so I decided to tick this off. Vertical sync also creates jitter inside of the actual game itself. So I generally turn this off for every single car sims. It's good to have for non-VR usage. For frame rate limit, again, 91 frames per second is what I put, although, don't put more than 90 because the headset obviously can't render more than 90 hertz, 90 hertz, 90 frames per second. So why have the computer work harder than it's supposed to? There is absolutely no use for that. Then I put anisotropic filtering to maximum, anti-aliasing samples to maximum, world detail to maximum, and shadows resolution to ultra. Even though shadows, generally speaking, does take quite a lot of computational power, but I just wanted to show you what this RTX Quadro from the HP uh, G7 Fury ZenBook is capable of doing because I think you'll be pretty, pretty well surprised. Let's go to effects uh, for normal smoke generation. Well, I put normal for smoke generation. Show smoke in mirrors generally, you will not need this. For post processing, yes, I enable post processing effects for sure. For effect precincts, presets, let me know in the comments below what's your favorite preset because mine, personally speaking, is movie. Now, this will be completely up to you. Um, you know, it won't affect the performance of the game. Overall effect quality, I put this on ultra. Glare quality, I put this on normal. Depth of field quality, now I put this on ultra because I really want good depth of field there. Uh, color saturation, I generally bring it a little bit down. I don't like my colors too saturated, otherwise it looks a bit too arcadey. Crepuscular rays, yes, I put it there for more enhancements in the game. Heat shimmering effects, yes, of course, if it's very hot, it's nice to see some shimmer there. And fast ap uh, approximate anti-aliasing, I found that this really does bring the quality of the game down. You will see more jagged edges around the game. So I decided to turn this off or to disable this. Let's go to view. For view, field of view, I put around 80, 90 degrees field of view for me is absolutely fine. Um, glancing left to right speed, I just leave it as it is. G-force effects, I leave it as it is. And for the rest, I only enable display downshift protection notification. All the rest, I disabled. For reflections, I leave it as is, except for high quality mirror reflections. This is generally left off because I do not need this. All right, so now let me just show you the actual control setting as to how to get things set up properly. It's very, very easy. All you basically have to do is go to start configuration and then just configure things naturally, automatically. Normally speaking with the G923, you will not need to do anything custom or anything like that. 
And then basically, the other thing I did have to do, however, is sometimes I had to tick inside of these things and just, you know, do as what it's asking me to do. And then I had to invert all the options here because if I didn't, then the gas pedal would be full on already when I'm starting the game. And when I put the gas foot on the gas pedal, then it would stop the gas. So it was completely inverted uh, in terms of the actual settings themselves. So I decided to click on invert for absolutely everything. Uh, shifters, I leave it, you know, I went through it one by one. And then secondary as well and advanced, I just leave it as is, to be honest, at this moment in time, because I don't need to do anything else. All right. And then also do make sure that you have your, um, you know, Logitech your actual Logitech software open and open up before you launch Steam or before you launch the app at least. Otherwise, it may not work when you go inside of VR. Just FYI. And the only annoying thing inside of this Aceto, Aceto Corsa, by the way, is that you do need to use your mouse. And I'll show you exactly how to do that and, you know, what happens when you start a game. So let's go to Drive. Now, you'll see that there are some cars here. For example, if I go to cars, now I picked the Formula One cars by RAC3 Sim Studio. Now, you can go to the previous video that I did upload to the channel, which will show you where to get these cars, how to download them, how to install them on your Aceto Corsa, because they don't come natively inside of the app FYI, and they are absolutely absolutely amazing now in terms of the track itself we are going to take the austrian track for the purpose of this demo so let me go here austrian track here we go austria and then we should find it here so the red bull ring gp there we go now you will need to purchase a dlc for this specific track, FYI. And do leave a comment below, hit the likes, and also you know, let me know if you want me to do more videos in the future to show you how to install more mods and all those kinds of different things. And do make sure to hit the notification bell after you subscribe, as I most undoubtedly will do videos like this in the future too, so you can be notified. You can download and install up to two, although there are more cars you can download from the website. As I mentioned, do go and check the previous video for this. All right, so we just hit on the start button and then it will automatically, basically what will happen is it will show inside of the VR headset, you will see it will go into Steam VR and then you'll be inside of VR in the cockpit. So let's move into there right now. All right, now the first thing is when you go into VR, you're most probably not going to be aligned with your car so all you have to do is take your left controller of your pico neo 3 link and then just simply go down here to reset seize it position and then just look ahead make sure you're aligned with your steering wheel properly and all comfy in there so that you can actually see everything that you need all right then the other thing that we need to do i just want to show you very quickly my graphic settings inside of Steam VR itself. So let's just go to video settings. I've done a lot of testing. I've really tried to be bumping things up as much as possible. And to be honest with you, I was able to go all the way to 250% using the G7 Fury ZenBook laptops graphics card, which is an NVIDIA Quadro. Um, but I did find, especially when I'm recording with OBS and things like that, that I could bring it all the way to 230. 250 gives me a little bit of jittery things, not too much, not uncomfortable to be honest with you, but 230 or 220 is generally the most comfortable there. At 100%, I will show you some footage later, you will see that there is a little bit more jagged you know, edges and things like that, but the graphics are still pretty, pretty good, I need to admit. All right, so let me just exit this and return to game. And then let me just exit very quickly on the actual PC as I need to switch off the Steam window. There we go, in order to be able to play. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you do need to use your mouse at this moment in time, and you will see on your screen a yellow ball that you can see in front of me here as I'm going up and down, basically, as you can tell. So all you have to do is navigate. Now, there are some settings that you can do, of course. You can customize your entire car, to be honest, before you start everything. 
absolutely everything, everything, everything. And you can also do other various different options here. So I won't, you know, you can go through on your own time and then basically just go to the steering wheel and the game will start automatically. But before we do that, I just wanted to show you very quickly, let me just click on this and close the window. I just wanted to show you the graphics as to how things look at this moment in time because it's pretty, pretty phenomenal. The colors are okay. It's very comparable to my HP Reverb G2, even though the, in the HP Reverb G2, the graphics are slightly better. I do have to say that compared to the 4K DP cable, excuse me, there are some slight differences. It is smoother inside of the HP Reverb G2, but that's only because the display of the Pico Neo 3 Link, of course, is not 4K per eye. It is HD per eye. So that is also why. But the quality in here is pretty phenomenal, especially for somebody who probably has never used VR before. You're definitely going to have an amazing sensation in here. There is pretty much no screen door effect whatsoever. I can see the spectators without any issues whatsoever. The grills are super, super defined. I can see the little details of the grill, the barriers over there. All the text in front of me on the steering wheel are super readable, including the tiny little text there where it says Lab Turbo Boost. It's just absolutely phenomenal. And the little switches, LED, clutch. I mean, I can read every single piece of text, including the text on all the other cars. And the banner at the very top over there, it says speed, speedweek.com. It's just absolutely phenomenal. Even the number plate of the Mercedes in front of me, I can read the text there. It's just really, really, really cool. So, all right, guys, let's start racing now and see how things go in terms of the performance. All right, let me click on the wheel. There we go. We're about to start. All right, my wheel is working, as you can tell. We're about to go, 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 go. Is it turning to green? Not yet. Come on, let's go. All right, let's do this. Oh no, my wheel is inverted because I clicked on invert by mistake. All right, let me, never mind. Let me just try to drive the best way I can. <laughs> and then after I'll do another flying lap, of course. But at least you can see the performance. Yeah, I have to go back into the settings, of course, and on invert. <laughs> on invert the wheel. <laughs> All right, let me just do that now because it's frigging, it's so hilarious. Oh man. All right, guys, by the way, just another tip that if your game does play in automatic automatically when you start, then all you have to do is make sure to go on realism here. Just click on it and then you can actually enable or disable the automatic gearbox, also the automatic throttle blip and various other settings, of course. Now, for the purpose of this demo I'm making things a bit easier for myself so you can see some good gameplay there but you can also of course adjust it depending on your level of the actual game itself All right let me just go back to settings very quickly and go back to controls and as you can notice in the main control my steering wheel was inverted so I have to uninvert this and then let's just go back and go back into the game and just click on start guys I'll see you back inside of the cockpit all right, guys, so we're back inside the cockpit. We're just about to start the race again now. Three, two, one, go, go, go. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. All right, here we go now. Oh, everything is working really well now, as it should. Oh, man, this is absolutely awesome. Really loving it in here. Woo. And do let me know in the comments below, what is your favorite preset? Mine is movie. I really like the colors with the movie setting, I have to admit. All right, let's go to fifth gear, sixth gear, seventh gear, eighth gear. Woo! On the Austrian Grand Prix, pretty amazing. And the car handles so well. Guys, do go and check the previous video, as I mentioned, where you can learn how to download this car. It is really, really, really ph phenomenal. I'll tell you that. The controls in here, the traction control, I mean, it just, sticks to the actual ground like crazy and you can see all the details over there inside of the trees are absolutely phenomenal there aren't that many jagged edges at all i can tell you that the rtx quadro is handling this thing like a beast like a beast I tell you it's absolutely amazing the level of detail in this game compared to aceta um sorry automobilista 2 is really really comparable 
I mean, I have to admit, admit that Automobilista 2 now has some serious, serious competition on its hands now. All right, I've gone into the pits by mistake. Never mind. All right, let's get out of the pits. Now, the other thing that I can talk to you about very briefly is that in the previous video where I spoke about the Pico Neo 3 Link update 4.7.1.7, that there were some issues in terms of the 3D models that were blown out a little bit of proportion. So do go and check out that video, guys, because it is true that inside of Aceta, uh, Aceto Corsa, sorry, there are some issues with the proportions of the models. The car definitely feels, uh, you know, 1.3 or 1.5x larger compared to when using the HP Reverb G2. That is for sure. That is, oh, 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 that is very true. I'm trying to talk and drive at the same time. It's really, really not easy to keep focus, I have to admit. But yeah, if you're a new VR user and you've never done VR before, you're probably not really going to notice it, to be honest. It's going to be very okay to you. But for those who, oh, gone off the gravel a little bit there. But for those who have never tried, uh, for those who, sorry, have been in VR for a long, long, long time, and spend countless of hundreds of hours, for example, myself or someone like you, then you will definitely notice the fact that things are larger by 1.3 or 1.5x, I would say. It's not disturbing to the point that, you know, it makes the gameplay horrible. No, 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 it really doesn't. Everything is good. Um, but you will, you will need to get used to it a little bit. You know, if you're coming from especially the HP, uh, the HP Reverb, don't want to make that mistake a second time, um, then you will definitely notice it for sure. Uh, perhaps if you're using another VR headset, it's possible that it's the same. I'm not quite sure. And also, I did say yesterday that it could have been a cable issue. Uh, so I will write in again to Pico's development team in order to find out more information. Whew, guys, this was absolutely amazing. I mean, really, really breathtaking. No issues with the graphics. As you can see, I'm running my OBS software to record the footage as well, although I'm running the camera on a separate computer to make sure I don't eat up too much of the actual software whilst I'm playing. But the detail is just phenomenal. I mean, look at this. The detail in the glove here is really, really amazing. There's no issues with the graphics whatsoever. The colors are absolutely great. I could probably bump this up even further, but as I mentioned before, when I'm running OBS after 2.30 in SteamVR Super Sampling, it will show some issues, some jitteriness here and there. So I'd rather to bump it down. But honestly speaking, without my OBS, I could bring it up all the way to 250 without any issues whatsoever, guys. So I just wanted to show this to you because it is absolutely Absolutely phenomenal. All right, guys, so we're back inside of SteamVR. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the actual graphic settings. So again, you need to use your left controller, not your right one. Unfortunately, the right button, the Pico button here, doesn't work on the right controller for some, I don't know, Hopefully they can get that fixed. That would be good because it's annoying to have to always think about using the left. Um, and then we're just going to go to Home, Video Settings. And then we're going to go to Aceto Corsa again. And I'm just going to bring down the super sampling all the way back down to 100%. So it can give you a side-by-side -side graphics as to how things actually look. And then I'm just going to close this. And then also, of course, um, I'm going to just go to return to home. There we go. And then we're going to go to Aceto Corsa. Now, I just want to mention that there is no bleeding of colors. Also, the colors are all very good. Um, and also the, uh, the, the center point in terms of getting clarity and no blurriness is very large. So I'm not having any issues in terms of, you know, uh, making sure that everything looks properly uh, when I'm inside of VR. Everything is super clear everywhere. Uh, so that's all very good. All right. So now let's uh, click on Aceto Corta and go back inside of VR. I'll see you guys right in there in just a moment. Okay, guys, so we're back inside of the cockpit now of this beautiful car by RAC3 Sim Studio. And we're just about to start the race in just a moment. And I just wanted to show you some comparison graphics now at 100% SteamVR. I have to admit that there are more jagged edges for sure. And it's not as clear at the 
beyond over there, like for example, the banner, I know it's speedweek.com, but it's not as clear. And also I'm not able to read the number plate of the car in front of me. However, I can read FINA first on, on and FINA also text on the back of the car. On the car over there, I can't read the small text. It's a little bit too jagged for me. And there are more jagged edges on the actual body of this car itself. I can see the shadows there. Um, the shadows are at smooth between the shadow and the actual red paint itself, where the, the, the brighter part of the paint is. But, you know, I can still pretty much, it is still pretty good, I have to admit. I mean, the, the wheel itself in front of me, the cockpit itself is very, very crystal clear. All's good, although it is more difficult to read the smaller text there. Uh, Multi-switch LED, it's a little bit more difficult to read that, I have to admit. So there are some compromises there in terms of the graphics at super sampling 100%. But this is an RTX Quadro. Uh, it's possible that with you guys, it is supposed to be better than the RTX 2070 FYI. However, the laptop has less CPU in terms of cores. It's a 2.70 gigahertz versus 4.9 gigahertz on my actual RTX 2070 desktop. All right, let me um, use the mouse again in order to start the race and let's just see what happens in terms of the actual gameplay. All right, let's start. There we go. The wheel is working. Everything's good. Engines are revving. Come on, come on, come on. We can do this. Go, 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 go. All right, let's go. Ah oh man, look at this, straight away, going all the way to the front. Ah oh man, and we are, we are in manual, guys. I just want to make this clear. We're not, ooh, we're not in automatic in the game at all. You can change this, as I mentioned before. And guys, do hit the notification bell after you subscribe, as I will be uploading more content similar to this in the future using the G923 Logitech and potentially other wheels as well, of course. But this G29 is absolutely fantastic, I need to admit that. Uh, in fact, we could talk about this just a little bit. The responsiveness of the wheel is very good. Um, I definitely feel every little piece of vibration for sure. But it's just, I know it's not the most professional of wheels. Of course, there, there are other wheels out there that are more expensive and all this kind of stuff. But it's so much good fun. I mean, as someone who used to use the Xbox, Xbox S controller all the time, I have to say that it is just tremendous fun and I'm so thankful that Logitech provided us with the wheel. Sorry if I'm not choosing the right gear, it's because I'm talking at the same time. So unfortunately, lack of focus there. Now in terms of the graphics, coming back to the graphics, um, there are definitely some compromises here for sure. It's not as clear as what it was before, that is for sure. More jacket edges, the graphics are definitely a bit more blurry and less sharp. So bumping it up to 230 is definitely, definitely recommended if you are able to do that. But the gameplay itself though is very good, very smooth, very enjoyable. I'm not having a headache of any kind or motion sickness or anything like that. The frames per seconds here, I mean, they're running. I don't know what they're running at, but at the end of the day, they are, they are most probably running very, very, very smoothly, I would imagine, because I'm able to just power through like knife hot knife in butter it's just absolutely absolutely crazy guys just i really love this it's just giving me the best car sims racing sensation in vr at the moment it has completely dethroned automobile tattoo for me in terms of oh in terms of being inside of a you know an f1 car i'm not talking about the other cars of course because i haven't yet tried all the cars in aceto corta so I cannot comment on the other cars, but in terms of the Formula One cars, wow, man, it's absolutely amazing. And it really puts F1 2022 to shame. It really, really, really does, really does. The graphics in here are just phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Come on, whoa! <laughs> I think I clipped it there. All right, all right, guys. That's it for today. Absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for watching the video and for subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell after you subscribe. You guys are absolutely amazing. Give a shout out to all of you. You guys are awesome. All right, I'll see you in another video on the left one or the right one there. And of course, I'll see you in another new video very soon. So do hit the notification bell after you subscribe. Until next time, guys.
Take it easy. See you later. See you later, guys. Oof. I'm just going to keep playing, man. Woo. Absolutely awesome.